So thanks a lot uh, for yeah uh, letting me give this talk, which so again is a, is a little bit outside of the just the main scope of this conference. But because it's about singularity theory and application of singularity theory, then something that I, I find very interesting, uh, I thought I would uh, talk about it. So thank you for being here. Um, so this singular singular learning theory. So it's it's uh, uh, due to this uh, Japanese statistician, mathematician, uh, Sumi Watanabe. And so it's an application of singularity theory uh, to, Beige to specifically to Bayesian statistics. Um, and this will be most, I mean, this will be this talk and, and probably uh, some, some of tomorrow's talk because it's quite, a, it's quite a long story and I don't want to, to rush you. And, and I know that slide talk can be uh, difficult to follow. Um, but there are also um, in more recently, basically last last year or in the over the last few years, some applications of this uh, of singular singular learning theory to um, machine learning and to specifically to what's called interpretability of of, uh, of machine learning model and particular deep neural network. And so this is uh, oh, this is the work of of Dan Murphy <coughs> and his many many collaborators. And so I will talk a little bit about this uh, tomorrow, but because this is a talk by a mathematician and for an audience of mathematician, I will focus on the on the theory and on uh, what is somehow what is necessary to make this. I mean, to bridge <laughs> to the the gap between the theory and, and the applications and the applications themselves. Since I'm also less qualified to talk about them, I will mostly give an impressionistic uh, picture. <coughs> No, exactly. So yeah, the, the the key result of of Watanabe, so uh, the, in a, first in a rough form, is says that the, the asymptotic performance, which in a way that we may precise, may precise of uh, of statistical model of parametric statistical model, is controlled by by singularity by the singularities of of a function attached to the model and and the and the data generating process, um, and the precise form is that. Uh, the asymptotic Bayesian generalization uh, performance of the of real analytic parametric statistical model. So, and for data which is um, um, uh, identically and independently distributed, is controlled by an invariant of singularities called the real local analytical threshold. And for what functions? So, for the the relative entropy between the model and the data generating data generating distribution. And basically, yeah, the main goal of this is. The first first part is to is to give a precise mathematical meaning to this. And of course, there is a lot. <clears throat> um, yeah. So first, uh, so I will start with the geometry and with the singularity theory. And so I will uh, tell you a little bit about this invariant called the, the real local analytical threshold. Um, then I will set up a bit of statistics, so the Bayesian statistics, in the the, the form that Watanabe uh, uh, uses for his result. Uh, and then I will explain. So the, the main result of, of Watanabe is, is an asymptotic result, uh, and this is the part of what's called statistical learning theory. And so it's specifically statistical learning theory for, for singular models, with the regular case being the sort of very classical uh, Bayesian statistics. Um, and then uh, somehow to, to get towards application, there will be the, we will sort of localize this theory, so look at local Bayesian statistics, and that, that will lead to some, some interesting uh, good, but really consequences of, of what Anabis work, but uh, yeah, when you look at it locally. Um, then I will give a very quick introduction to, to machine learning and to stochastic optimization, which is a quite different setting. I mean, even though it's, it's in both cases, you're trying to learn from, uh, from data, it's, it's very different from, uh, from Bayesian statistics, uh, and so, the transition between the two will, is, is kind, of, kind of the challenge of the story. Uh, and then I will quickly say something about these applications to, to interpret them. <coughs> All right, so, um, so in, that, in that part on singularity, so I will, I will introduce this, with, uh, yeah, I will so, uh, set up my, uh, my, yeah, can give my geometric setup, my uh, real analytic functions and the singularities. I will discuss two, two very simple but key examples of this. The behavior that that's captured by this uh, real local analytical threshold, then we will see that it has some of many uh, geometric interpretations. So it's kind of a nice, um, um, a nice invariant with yeah, several different uh, and sort of analytic uh, uh, interpretations. 
Uh, I will explain a few more examples and I will comment on the, some of the wider context and similarities. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, so my functions are always going to, to, to be defined on some compact subsets uh, with non-empty interior and assume sem so semi-analytic, so given by some real analytic inequalities. Um, and yeah, we'll have a real analytic function on, on there. And so a few, a few remarks about this. So in the, in the application, actually F will always be uh, non-negative. And so we will concentrate on, the, on this case. Um, what should, I mean, in, the, in this part, what should we be careful about what happens at the boundary somehow? Uh, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to, I'm just going to pretend that the boundary doesn't exist and that the interesting behavior is either completely on the or somehow it doesn't yeah, concentrate on the, on the boundary. Um, and so an important special case is also the case of, uh, of polynomials. Um, and this is a case where we can do uh, explicit computation, so including the computer algebra system. Um, we can bring more tools from algebraic geometry so, or and real algebraic geometry. And in, in some cases, it is possible to reduce real analytic uh, situations to algebraic one uh, for, this, uh, for this real local and threshold. But the, the, the application statistic really involves non-polynomials. I mean, Real analytic functions which are not polynomial. Um, so you probably all, all of you here probably know this definition, but I'll just give them quickly. So I mean a, a zero of a function is, is what it is, but so it, it just leaves it, uh, lets me introduce this this set, the set of zeros which will really play a, a crucial role. So so this is a real analytic uh, set. Um, a point is a critical point if it's um, um, if the, the uh, uh, all the partial derivatives at the point vanish, and the single and for and for for me just for terminology, a singularity is a point which is both a zero and, and a critical point. And so local minima and maxima are critical points. And in particular, but in particular, if and this is the situation again that we were most interested in. Since f if f is positive, then every point is a global minimum and then it's a singularity. Every zero is a. You know, uh, here's the first key example. It's just the sum of of d square where d is the dimension, and so my domain here will be a closed ball of of radius r and the origin. So this is I mean, this is a situation for a non-negative function. The zero locus is just the origin, and there's a unique singularity. So here's the first uh, in sort of behavior that we're going to look at. We're going to to consider for such uh, real analytic function the, the sublevel set. Uh, so the the points uh, such that uh, f of w, or any, in general, we look at the, the absolute value of f, of f of w is less than, than some epsilon. And we're interested in the asymptotic behavior where epsilon goes to zero. So in our case, this, I mean, in this case, this is just a, a ball of, of radius square root of epsilon. So we know what the volume of a, of a ball is. <coughs> but from this, uh, from this formula, we sort of, I, I don't really care about this constant. I, I'm just going to, to keep this as an, as in sort of, uh, asymptotic behavior, so it's equivalent to some constant times uh, epsilon to the root. And, in, and also this volume concentrates around the origin. Um, here's another sort of behavior, that, I mean, an another thing that you can do with, a, with a, such a realistic function, you can define the zeta function. So uh, for, for S, uh, complex number with real part big enough, you can look at this, uh, uh, this function. <coughs> and um, I mean, in particular, this will always make sense for any uh, uh, real number with a real part uh, and non-negative, but we're so interested in what happens when S, S becomes uh, uh, negative. Uh, so in, in, this, in the case of, in the sum of square, you, you, you sort of, you can integrate for, I mean, over, over, over the spheres uh, where the function is constant and you get a formula like this. And uh, if you look at this, this formula, I mean, sort of depending on the sign of this, and you see that I mean, first of all, this data function always has meromorphic continuation to, to see, very easy in this case. We And the poles are all uh, uh, real and uh, negative. Uh, but in particular, the largest pole is minus d over 2, and, and it has other one. Um, and here's the third type of analytic behavior that we're interested in with, with our real ethnic function is the sort of Laplace type integral. So we're looking at this integral. Um, so first of all, uh, even though we for technical uh, for technical reason it's easier to restrict to, to compact uh, do domains 
uh, yeah, that doesn't really matter because when n goes to infinity, this integral, I mean, the, the, the integral outside of, of this compact domain uh, uh, goes to zero. And so we, we can just look at this integral. And this integral is very easy because so first of all, by Fubini, uh, it's, uh, d it's, a, it's a product of d, d times the Gaussian integral, and the Gaussian integral is uh, square root of pi over n. And so we get the following uh, thing. So if I define this, if I call z, zf of n this, uh, this integral, um, it's, it, it's, uh, it has this, uh, this asymptotic uh, equivalent when n goes to infinity. And again, the integral concentrates. OK, so in this case, I mean, we, it's not so difficult. So let's look at a slightly more complicated example, the case of a monomial function. So let's fix some domain uh, which contains 0. And again, it's not that important what it is, but let's just take minus 1, one to the d. And so we fix some exponents. Uh, some integer exponents, and f is just the monomial function, um, so product of, of powers of the, the coordinates. Um, so in that case, it's not necessarily that the case that f is, is non-negative, but so f is non-negative if and only if the, the ukis are even. Um, and this so this set of zero is the intersection of this domain with with the coordinate hyperplane. So in particular, it's, it's uh, and the singularities of f are I mean, all of w zero. So in that case, we really have non-isolated. Uh, singularity, so it's quite a different situation from the, the previous one. Um, so here's an exercise that you, that you can uh, that you can try um, is the look at the volume scaling of this function. So again, I look at the the sublevel set of this monomial function. So now it's a bit more. It's not a sphere. It's a bit more complicated. Um, <coughs> and I, I do need to I do, I do need a cutoff uh, to make this this volume finite in general. Uh, but so if you do this cutoff and, and if, you, if you look at this, the, this asymptotic behavior when, when epsilon goes to zero, you, you get the following thing. It's constant times uh, epsilon to the lambda times minus log epsilon to the m minus one. And so what are these lambda and m minus one? So those are kind of the, the star of the show. So for this section, it's really this invariance that we're interested in. So lambda is the, is the minimum of the one over ki's. Uh, and m is the number of i's such that uh, this uh, this minimum is is uh, rich, so it's a number of i such that one over k is is lambda is this minimum. And in that case, the, you see that the volume concentrates, so in the sense that can be made precise, or most of most of the volume, it's, um, yeah, concentrates around not not just not just around w zero, but around the subset of uh, of w zero. So this w zero degen degenerate, so for some of the most degenerate singularities, which is those uh, the intersections, th those coordinate hyperplanes, which which have the uh, the smallest uh, um, and the largest ki, or so the, the smallest uh, uh, one of the ki. Um, <clears throat> again, we can look at the zeta function, and again, it's it's in that case, it's 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 quite easy because so by sy by symmetry, I mean because you have this plus and minus, the function is. Um, because we're taking the absolute value by symmetry, this is 2 to the t times the, the integral of a 0, 1. And then by Fubini, you, you, you get this. I mean, I just did this symmetry just yeah, to make this even simpler. Um, and it's easy to see that each of these factors converges if and only if the real part of S is greater than minus 1 over ki. And so that, and again, is, yeah, we see, you see easily just by looking at each of these individual factors that the zeta function has meromorphic continuation to see with uh, negative poles, and the largest pole is minus minus lambda uh, because of this condition, and it, and it has order m. And here's an, so another exercise, maybe other exercise, um, which is the asymptotic of the Laplace type integral in this case. So when when you have a f is a monomial, you look at this integral. Um, then again, when n goes to infinity, this is a constant times. Uh, n to the minus lambda times log n to the m minus one, and again the integral concentrates somewhere around the same the same set. Okay, so what what lessons can we can we sort of draw from these examples? Uh, so in both cases we have these two invariants, so a, a rational number and, a, and an integer, uh, and they seem to control. I mean they con they do control in this in this case. In that. So they control the asymptotic volume of of the of these sublevel sets. And here I, I, I put some pictures, which were done by Jesse, Jesse Um So you kind of have to go to look at them in reverse. So this is when epsilon goes to zero is when we're from going from right to left. 
so this is the this is the sum of square in two dimension, and this is the case of uh, of uh, of a monomial, and this is the case where the monomial has, has uh, different powers. <coughs> Let's say this could be uh, x two y four, um, and then you see that this volume. I mean, you see that along in this case, for instance. Uh, Let's, so let's say that this is the yeah you, you see you see that it's the volume really concentrates around one of the axes and not and not the other and it is the axis which has the, the largest uh, uh, which corresponds to the coordinates which la largest uh, exponent um <laughs> so this this uh, lambda and m also control the behavior of, of the largest pole of this the the, the zeta function which is always meromorphic and so, in particular, it controls some, it controls when when this when this function is integral, because um, that's exactly what what this what this largest pole means. And it controls the asymptotic of the the, the corresponding Laplace type uh, integral. And so, what yeah, what I'm claiming is that this is a completely general phenomenon for for in our setting. And and so the yeah the the the, the general uh, Version of this lambda, uh, this number lambda is the really local canonical or RLTT. So, um, so the real canonical threshold of F is defined as the supremum of, of those S such that uh, the absolute value of F to the minus S is integrable. So a priori, it's, it's uh, it could be a positive real number or it could be uh, infinity. <coughs> Sometimes it's also called the critical integrability index. So also sort of depending on the, the literature and, uh, um, and in part, I mean in analysis it's uh, sometimes called the critical integrity in that what would they call it in the um, this really comes from the terminology here, here, here really comes from algebraic geometry um, so here's a small lemma so if uh, I mean, this 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 is finite if and only if the W zero is non-empty, and and when it is non-empty, then then it's actually always uh, less. Uh, that's why called an half of the dimension. And we will, uh, just for simplicity, and uh, we'll assume that our domain is always uh, non-empty. Uh, yeah, my our function always has a zero, uh, just to keep the statements clean. Like that the integral of, of, of W of F to the minus S converges. Yeah. <coughs> um, and so what is what is happening is that when S is small, this, this will always be the case. And somehow, as we saw in this example, there's, four, there's always an, an S when it's breaks down. Uh, it's the down and the down. Yeah. Okay, no, no, I, 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 I added D term. Yeah, yeah, I did D term. Yeah, I, I could also, I mean, I could also say what happens when you, you have less than D term. I choose to do the maximum number. So. And so, yeah, so from the, in the, the two examples before, so we see, we, I mean, we saw that the, this uh, relocating scroll threshold of the sum of, of these squares is D over two, which, as I just said, is the maximum possible. And uh, in, in that case, is the minimum of the one over there. So in that case, in fact, it's always less or equal to, to one. Okay, so here is the, 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 the generalization of the observations that, that we have. And I think, uh, so I mean, I don't know exactly who to attribute this theorem to, but certainly it is described, I mean, in, oh, in many results around this are described in the book of, of Arnold, Bouté, Zandé, and the same book. So I think there are different sort of um, and, and also, I mean, the, 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 these, and this is basically all these results are too much what happened in his, uh, in his work uh, space. Um, so, um, so, yeah, let me write lambda for the real mechanical threshold of that. So, th then there is a, an integral m. So, it's not standard terminology, but I'll just call it the real mechanical multiplicity. Um, uh, such that we have the same the same asymptotic as before. So the volume of sub level sets are just like these. Uh, the zeta function is meromorphic and the largest pole is minus lambda with all m. And the Laplace type with the goal of the Okay. Yeah. 
that's that's how yeah that's how the book is here. Yeah. Cool. I will I will say something about it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I I I don't know what the precise if there is a precise relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So many of the f the formal properties. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I, I, the, the formal properties are, are, are much closer to the, the minimal exponent. Although there are some subtlety, I mean, the formal properties for, for like non negative functions. Yeah, so this, yeah. this is what we're calling back Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this, this, this quantity is actually kind of a loop. I mean, it can be local in the sense that any point for any zero, for any zero, zero, you can define the local real mechanical threshold. So and it's just defined in the same way. So I said that now you do the fact that the function is locally integrable at W. And you can also see it as the real mechanical threshold of F restricted to some small enough open neighborhood of W. And yeah, okay. Uh, now my open neighborhood is not compact. So, yeah. um, you, you, you can imagine that you can extend this definition. Um, okay, so now the the fact is that the this the global uh, real mechanical threshold is just the minimum of the of the local one, um, and in this previous uh, CRM, the the integrals, uh, I mean the the volume, which is an integral, and and the Laplace integral, they they concentrate again asymptotically uh, around the, the subset of most degenerate singularity, which will yeah, again not by. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's see a bit how this looks like for this Laplace type integral. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. So um, I mean, there, there are many there are many uh, yeah. I mean, there are many interpretations of the of the. Complex local special, which I don't, which I don't know if if they're old or what what the correct analog for. Yeah. for this, but yeah. <clears throat> um, But so the yeah the the advantage or something part interesting about the about the real case is this this and it's exactly the thing that that's relevant for two statistics is the, the asymptotic of the Laplace integral so it doesn't really make sense obviously. um so yeah so so for instance let's look at this function x well, well the, the the my function here is actually a non-negative function x x cube minus y to the five to square uh, and so of course I mean this. The W zero is the same as this locus, right? So it's this, this, uh, this curve, um, and you see that if you look at this 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 uh, integral, then most of the uh, most of the mass of the integral is is concentrated around uh, around zero, and this is only going to get <laughs> so. And this is this is this is the point where the, the this is the W zero degenerate, and this uh, it's only and if you if you do exponential of minus n times and you let as n goes to infinity, this only gets was and was somehow. I mean, the, 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 this 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 blob in the middle will will shrink, but it will shrink much slower than the than what happens. And uh, same thing here. So and here it's it's uh, even it's maybe even more interesting because over R you you only see uh, I mean this W zero has two components and there's there's this isolated point. But this isolated point is the again the most degenerate point, and it's again it carries most of the, the mass of the integral. So those are yeah, those are pictures from the, the talking of Fraternity. <coughs> okay, but let, let's see, so let's see some very simple cases. So I mean, um, if you have a smooth point, so a point which is not singularity, then this real mechanical threshold is one, and the multiplicity is one. And okay, but this, this actually never happens if for a negative function. <coughs> so yeah, but so for a non-negative function, what which which does something which does happen uh, and is relevant to our story is non-degenerate singularities or more uh, more singularities 
So again, if uh, let's assume that f is non-negative and and you have a, a point such that the Hessian is uh, positive definite or so is invertible, uh, which means that in particular this w zero is an isolated point in, in w zero. Uh, then then this Laplace integral is actually a very classical uh, object, and there is the classical Laplace approximation, which uh, I mean, first of all, you, you you see this n to the minus d over two, so the the Pilot chemical special is. So this is this is just a, I mean, it's a generalization of the case of the sum of, of these squares. But also you have a you have a precise formula for this uh, for this constant, and it's one of the very few cases where you have actually have a simple formula for the constant. Okay, so so now yeah, I will I will say a little bit about how how this is proven, and I mean this is relevant because the 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 proof of the, the main results of Watanabe in the statistical context also go, uh, uses the same strategy. I mean, it's inspired by, by this design. Um, so by, by Hironaka, by uh, Hironaka's resolution theorem, which, which does hold, no, so not only in, in the complex algebraic case, which is the most familiar and the most uh, used, but also if for, also for real analytic geometry, um, there is a real analytic log resolution of the function. So uh, a proper real analytic map such that I mean it doesn't change anything outside of the zeros, uh, and locally on on the in, on the resolution the function is is monomial. So this is a, those are local coordinates in some charts of the of the real um, So with some uh, is monomial times some some non-vanishing function, some uh, real real analytic non-vanishing function, uh, and and again the you can also arrange that the, the Jacobian determinant. Which okay, you need to fix some orientations, but locally you, you can do this. Um, is uh, is monomial as well with different with different uh, exponents. <coughs> and you see that um, f is uh, again again. Uh, I mean, this is like in the monomial case. F is uh, non-negative if and only if all of these ki's are uh, even. Um, okay. And, Introducing a resolution also gives you another sort of interpretation of the uh, a more al algebraic geometric uh, interpretation of the, the real local threshold in terms of the combinatorics of the resolution. Namely, it's the it's the minimum overall chart of the minimum in sort of some of these local uh, in in of these local coordinates of this uh, so h h i plus one over k i. Sorry, k i were, were the exponents of the function and h i the exponents of the um, which you can think of as that's why they might be some as like long long discrepancy. Um, and the, the and again the 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 real local multiplicity has to do with the number of times this uh, this uh, expression is the, the real local -income. So in fact, the real local threshold is rational, and that's not at all clear from any of, from any of the the analytic uh, definition and. I don't know any proof that it's rational with doesn't use a, you know. Ah, uh, sorry, this is getting a bit uh, So when when f is a polynomial, then uh, sometimes you can actually you can actually compute the resolution and 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 get formulas for the for this real real local threshold. But I mean, in the general real real analytic case, I don't know, writing down the resolution seems and, and it's it's all the more impressive that Mironaka's theorem ensures that there is one. No, so in here there's no weak factorization. It's just the it's just the resolution. Yeah. So yeah, you don't need that. Uh, Oh, yeah, 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 it, it does. Uh, yeah, and so there's just this, this point that the resolution is, and you, you probably in this audience all are all familiar with, but maybe someone online is not that the, the, this resolution is not is, is not canonical. There is no unique choice, and uh, but on the other hand, this the real local kind of threshold. I mean, as we so see from the analytic picture, is is completely independent. So this is even though the combinatorics of the, the of any particular resolution may, or two different resolution might be quite different. These uh, these numbers are the same. So yeah, let me sketch out this uh, this. I mean, basically the argument that, that you mentioned. 
um, which is how to prove this. So, uh, and this is, yeah, as I said, it's relevant because the main proof of this singular learning theory build on this on this strategy. So, so you fix the resolution, and now you can define this 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 lambda and m as in the resolution. Then you see that they all they, they coincide with the analytic ones. Uh, first, you do a base change. I mean, you can compute this. You compute this um, this zeta function uh, over the resolution by base change locally. So I mean, okay, the, the, this is not very precise. You, you, you have to take some some local chart basically and to do this. Um, and now locally, these two things are monomial, and so you can just use the computation of the the zeta function in the monomial case, and then you have to glue things together with a with a partition of unity argument, and that gives you the the properties of the the claimed property of the zeta function, the fact that there is a neuromorphic continuation, and um, so actually uh, this gives you a bit more. I mean, it gives you uh, more information about the structure of the pole. That doesn't tell you just about the the, the largest pole, but it tells you that. Basically, these um, the poles uh, uh, occur in a, in a in a finite series of, of arithmetic progressions, basically. And the structure of these poles, uh, together with a, with a, an argument involving the inverse Mellin transform, uh, gives you an asymptotic expansion of something. And so, just to make the talk a bit yeah, a bit more friendly, I didn't introduce that that something, but it's kind of the the key object in the middle of, that connects everything. Is this uh, of density of state or, or gelfand lorey uh, differential form. Um, oh, okay. So some of the key line here is, has disappeared. But then when, once you have this asymptotic expansion of the density of state, you can, and it's kind of it's important to have an asymptotic expansion rather than just an equivalent because you want to do some mani manipulations to it that you can't do just if you just have an equivalent. Um, uh, if you integrate it, uh, you get uh, the, the asymptote, you get an asymptotic expansion, and so in particular the the dominant term gives you the, the this equivalent uh, for the for the volumes of the sublevel sets, uh, and then if you take the Laplace transform of the density of state, which is hidden here, you get the, the Laplace integral. Uh, okay, maybe I won't go. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to mention. So the, we also know what happens, and that for the case of more more spot singularities, so the case of where you have something like a sum of squares, but less than these squares. Uh, so if you know the definition, maybe I won't, I won't comment on it. But in that case, the um, in particular, so w, this W zero is a sub manifold of dimension uh, d prime, and then the real mechanical threshold is, uh, is d prime over two. Um, okay, I know that. Yeah, maybe I, I won't, I won't comment on this, uh, this example. But just just to show you that in, in some in some simple cases you can compute it, but actually it's a, uh, as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm not I'm not an expert, but uh, it's it's quite a difficult environment to <laughs> to, to compute. Um, if you if you can't write explicitly a resolution of singularity, which in general you don't. Uh, okay, so this is a bit dense. Sorry, but this is so this is this is just because because there are many uh, really experts in, in singularity theory in the room. Is is to sort of explain the parallel with I mean that yeah they already <laughs> commented they already commented on with the complex situation. So in in complex analytic and complex analytic geometry algebraic geometry there is the log analytical threshold. Um, and in fact, it's it's a special case of the real one. And if you have a complex analytic function, you can just consider it as a real real analytic function. And then this local threshold is just the real local threshold of of it. But of course, it's just clear. Yeah, 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 you are, yeah, 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 yeah. To, yeah so you have to take the um, the square of the absolute. Value. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this is this is. Not, uh, um, and because everything factors through the absolute value. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. um, okay, so I mean, and this the re the local analytical threshold is is really a very rich invariant. I mean, yeah. So, and I, I'm certainly don't don't know uh, many. I mean, well, many of these these stories. But so, um, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm 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 also interested. Very yeah, very interested to know what which aspects of this story uh, extend to the to the real local analytical threshold and. Uh, some of the, some some of them are certainly more more promising than uh, than others, and the one that I, that I've been thinking about mo the most is the connection with uh, with uh, jet skis, which seems somehow more to be the, the ones where yeah the analogy uh, works works best. <clears throat> okay, so let's me summarize what this uh, this part. Um, so yeah, we have these two, these two, these two invariants, and they they control the the analytic behavior of, of the function around the, the zeros, 
around the, around the zero locus, so the volume scaling of, of several level sets, the poles of the data function, and the, this Laplace type integral. And that's the one that's actually most um, important for us. So these, yeah, as I said, it's a local quantity, and you, so, I mean you have this, in, and you have this this sort of mo interesting most degenerate locus inside of um, inside of W zero, and where the or everything concentrates. <coughs> okay, so now uh, let's talk about statistics. <laughs> um, so I'm yeah, I'm not a statistician. I um, try to to learn to learn about it. By, I mean basically. Mm. And certainly Bayesian statistics I've learned because because of this uh, this uh, connection. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to explain what is statistics about, and ra rather what is statistics about here and here and now for this for this talk. Um, I'm going. Yeah, th there will be a quite a bit of setup because so even though uh, the notions are, are have a pretty yeah pretty intuitive meaning like statistical meaning, there is quite quite a few of them. So it's uh, yeah. Uh, um, I'm going to talk about this distinction, this sort of key distinction for us between regular and singular model, which uh, on the sing I mean, from the singularity theory uh, perspective is just the difference between morphs, function, morphs and singularities, or non-degenerate singularities and, and all the others. The regular models are, are really the models for, for which the associated function, which I'm going to tell you about, uh, is, uh, is morph. Uh, so this, this will so this will somehow not involve any particular Bayesian statistics. So then I will start talking about the, the Bayesian part of Bayesian statistics, so prior and posterior distribution, and these two quantities, so the partition function and, and the free energy, which are parts uh, part of the, the story. And then um, then I will explain what you do with the in Bayesian. I mean, how you use at the end of the day uh, when you're not just doing pure pure mathematics uh, a Bayesian model to do like. Predictions and, and 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 so that leads to a, a generalization error, which is one of the main quantities that we want to control. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is a yeah, very yeah, uh, I guess very theoretical summary of what statistics is about. So we are we are given or we collect or we are given some data, so um, some data points. So and and data and data points and. Um, Produced by some unknown and, and noisy data generating process, and so this the, uh, remember this n this n is this n will go to infinity. I mean, well, we want to understand the limit when we get a lot of data, and yeah, what what can we learn from a lot of it? Uh, so we and inside, yeah, we want to infer some information about this data generating process from the data, <coughs> and to formalize to fo formalize this mathematically, we we sort of borrow from probability theory uh, and we treat these uh, these data as samples from the data generating probability distribution which I will always like to um, and then we try to approximate this uh, this q of x by the members of some uh, of some parametric statistical model so which will be a family of probability distribution parameterized by some uh, by some domain and that's really my w in my compact w in, in our and in so this is all uh, this is all general statistics in some sense, but in Bayesian statistics we also give ourselves one more piece of um, of information, which is a prior distribution on the on the set of parameters, and this reflects, I mean, depending on how, how you are, yeah who you ask, and some of this is kind of a, the point of contention in some of how to interpret Bayesian statistics. And, uh, but one way to think about it at least is that it reflects our a priori belief in how well the model approximates the, the, the data generating distribution. I mean, <coughs> basically, I mean, we start with this parametric model and we, we yeah. I mean, we, 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 we could sort of pretend that we, pretend that we don't know anything, but we, 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 could, we could also use the fact that we expect that if you're very, uh, if you're very far on the boundary of the domain, we don't expect these, these things to, to work. Right? And so we should incorporate them. the Bayesian uh, attitude is that we should incorporate as much of that information as possible into this this prime. <coughs> okay, so what well, here's the the cast of characters. Uh, so I, yeah, those are those are the things that I've just mentioned. So this data generating distribution, the data sets sample, uh, the parametric statistical model, and and the prior distribution. And from this, by some very simple manipulation, but yeah, you have to do it and you have to introduce them. 
uh, we are going to derive some quantities that um, that are going to tell us how, how well our model is doing and and, yeah. and so the key the key uh, the key uh, object here will well, certainly one of the key objects will be this relative entropy function so it's, it's going to be the relative entropy between the, the data generating distribution and the and the model and this will be the this will be the real analytic function whose singularities we we want on right, are going to to turn out to matter there is then an empirical version which depends on the set that you have. Um, there is this, I mean, this sort of the, the fundamental operation in Bayesian statistics to go from a, a, and that, I mean, this fundamental operation is just Bayes' rule, as we'll see, is to go from the prior distribution to a posterior distribution, which sort of uh, is now, I mean, now, now we have the information, I mean, we, we update on the information that, that we have on the data set, and we update our beliefs on the, where the, which which models should, should do well? Um, then the, so somehow associated to this to this thing, there are these two two things. So the normalized, I mean, don't yeah, maybe don't pay too much attention. To normalized, that's not normalized for now. A normalized partition function and normalized free energy. Um, then uh, we have, I mean, if we want to make prediction, we need a, a probability distribution on the, the the space where the data points live, and so this is going to be this predictive distribution, and and finally uh, we're going to have one one measure of how the how well the model is is generalizing to new data, which is Bayesian generalization. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you'll you'll see in, in two or three slides. Yeah. <coughs> um. So yeah, so here just for simply, I mean, yeah. Uh, so the, the theory can be ad somehow on the data side, the, the theory can be adapted to much, a more general setting. But what Anabi just tweets this for because that's what occurs in applications. And um, so our data um, data points are just points in points in some big RN, uh, and we assume that they are sampled sort of independently from the same uh, data genetic distribution. Um, uh, and so this will be a notation for the set of. Uh, of uh, L basically L1 fu L1 function on on X with this is a double bag measure sorry I should probably use a different symbol uh, with um, with integral one oh sorry it should be uh, non negative <laughs> um, yeah that's that's kind of a big a big part so th those are exactly the probability distributions uh, on on the X and so we are given some some uh, some model and so some parametric model and the space of parameter is some compact subset in RD as as in the previous section and that's why I've chosen the, the assumption in the previous section, basically. Um, and the parametric statistical model, so it's just a map from, um, from this W to this, uh, to this set of, uh, of probability distribution on X. Um, and so the key assumption is that this is a real analytic uh, function. Like This function is real analytic, and what does it mean? It means that locally, it can be written as a convergent power series in W with coefficients in, in, uh, in L1. It can make sense of, um, of this, and this is the case for most. And I will also I will comment on this at some point. For really for most uh, statistical and, or machine learning models, because they are usually they are built out of simple. Re oh. Out of simple uh, realistic function like exponential log, and so on, uh, hyperbolic tangent. <coughs> But there are some there are some exceptions and those exceptions can be oh, sorry. Yeah, there, there are some exceptions that I, I will comment on. <coughs> um and so I mean this 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 setup is a little abstract because uh basically you know, I mean yeah, some of the data is is generated from this distribution and, and these these have no I mean here yeah, they they have no structure. They're just some vectors in some big area. But in 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 statistics, in in I mean in many I mean the, the, yeah in many contexts, uh, what you are doing is regression. And what regression means is that uh, you want to predict some functional relationship. I mean your data is not some some uh, unstructured vector. It's a pair where you have let's you have x i and y i where so they live in two different RNs. Uh, and and we expect. I mean, we want to predict some functional relationship. And let's say, yeah. Uh, so yeah, y i is f of x i, and and then some noise, and maybe some Gaussian noise. 
because the central limit theorem, we can expect that in many cases, the noise is going to be approximately Gaussian. Um, and, so, and let's assume just, I mean, to, just to heuristically, I mean, to, just to, to put yourself in the right, uh, um, let's assume that we have many other examples of this IG, IG many other um, partial uh, data, data. So well, we just have the, uh, uh, the first one, and we, we would like to, to predict the second one. Um, and so how can we interpret this? We can interpret this as saying that the, the, the data generating uh, distribution of uh, X and Y, which is sort of a joint uh, probability distribution of these two, these two variables, uh, it factors as, I mean, I, I, as it's always true, that's yeah, Q of X and uh, Q of Y given X. But here we assume that this Q of X, that's why I use a different notation P, we assume that uh, uh, this, this P of X is known because we have many other examples of the X. So it's just the M. And just look at the, the distribution of the, um, these xj's, and, and this is our PRX. Uh, and we assume that this Q of y given by x is um, is basically Gaussian noise around the graph of of a function of some unknown function x with some variance um, sigma. <coughs> and then we can then then we can have a, we can set our models to be to have the same shape, except that. Uh, I mean, with the same p of x, and the, the conditional uh, the conditional distribution uh, again of this this sort of Gaussian form around the graph of a function, but this time this function will be some uh, parameterized function of uh, and parameterized real analytic function of w w times r n. <clears throat> I mean, so I I I um, I explained this j just because I mean, first of all, because. Of Regression problem that in this sort of un unsupervised or yeah, um, statistic, sort of general statistical problem, um, uh, and also is the one that that will come at the end in the application. <clears throat> and so, as an example, I will talk about so neural networks as, as regression model because so this function basically now can and once you once you are in this setup, you can make it as simple or as complicated as as you like. This maybe the simplest case would be, and, and the classical and very important case is, is linear regression. So where each of these maps is, an, is a linear or an affine uh, map, and so this this W is now just uh, parameterizes the, the an affine map. So just a, a function plus. A, well, okay, the, yeah, this is maybe not. It. You see, you see what I mean. So a matrix for the linear part and some some vector. Oh, for the. Oh, this is. A, Mm. Uh, it was supposed to charge for this, but it's not. Uh, ah, I think I think I know. It. Sorry. Rearrange cables on. Do you have any questions where this is? Uh...
And, and stop. So, so yeah, the Bayesian, Bayesian part, part of it when you add the part of it. And so there is a book here that is associated with the distribution, which is the beginning of the data. So, first of all, okay. basically, we follow base work. So, we say that the public is done with the end, it's sorry, the end, W, times the difficulty of the public, P of W, the open one. Um, Right, given by the end, and because the end is uh, I had uh, the data, it's uh, Oh, no, this is somewhat related. Um, I mean, this so, yeah, so one, one, one thing, everything can cement it. But this is mostly more, more complex singularity. And so, more complex singularity from, from um, interaction between the model and the, and the distribution. And it's not. It's not so easy to do it, yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so, so this, this, this notion of, of regularity plus singularity is kind of a theoretical one, and it is true that close to a, close to a single model, you will have uh, lots of regular model, and it's, it's, uh, it's not clear when you, when you start thinking about it, why, why you want to focus on those uh, singular models. Basically, what, what happens is that for, for a regular model, which is very close to a singular model, behaves very much like a singular model for, for any for any num like finite n. That would, uh, I mean, it, it is true that the asymptotic behavior when n goes to infinity will be very uh, will be very different. I mean, will really depend on if you are right at the singularity or just outside. But for for any reason n, um, you, you see what I mean. So. Yeah, yeah. As, as soon as the W zero is, uh, is uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, simple function can be simple. It's true that close to it there will be lots of more function. So you can you break it down to several zero like isolated single uh, mm -hmm. more. 